Hey everybody, it's RJ with Rose Liberty. Welcome back. Today's video is about how Hillary has received the endorsement of Bernie Sanders. And I have some recommendations for Bernie Sanders supporters who are feeling a little disenfranchised right now. And these four recommendations are meant to be taken as such, as recommendations. They aren't um, answers, right? So like, I'm not sitting here telling you that I know what's best for you or what you should do with your vote or who the best candidate is. And that hopefully will be refreshing because most of the videos I feel that you're going to find now that you're without a candidate now, if you're a Bernie supporter, um, are going to be convincing you to not vote for Hillary and to vote for Donald Trump. That's going to be the only answer that you're given aside from just vote for Hillary. Um, so I have those two on my list. I will address those quickly. And I have two other ideas for you guys. So, and then also what I'm going to do in the comment section or in the description below, I'm going to have some suggestions of things you could Google and some links to some other YouTube videos um, for each of my suggestions that will give you opportunities to study further on those ideas and uh, what the possible ups and downs would be for each of those. I just remembered before I get into the recommendations, I want to point out a couple things. First of all, this should be no surprise, right? So like, I'm not gonna take the same angle that I feel like a lot of people are taking in criticizing Bernie Sanders for what he did. Now, is it good? Is it morally consistent? Is it principled? Absolutely not. But it's exactly what you would expect. Party politics have, for as long as I've been alive, and I'm 33 years old, and probably well before that, have done this sort of delta effect, this sort of, you know, many roads to Babylon type of, I think I'm using that phrase correctly, type of approach where whoever doesn't get the bid, the nominee, is going to throw their hat in the ring for the for the candidate in their party who does. So it's not really a surprise that Bernie did uh, go ahead and support Hillary, right? The other thing is, it is a little bit different this time, I will just say, considering how vastly different the two party, uh, the two candidates part, uh, platforms were, Bernie's platform and Hillary's platform, very different. You might see some of the programs or policies or concepts carrying over from Bernie over to what Hillary is going to be about and for in favor of during her campaign. So that, that stands to reason, but it is very different what they were both um, offering to voters. Just because Bernie is, is endorsing Hillary doesn't mean that you have to. You, you may, right? That's one of your choices, but it doesn't mean you absolutely have to. Here are the four viable options that I think Bernie Sanders supporters have. I'm going to rank them from the easiest for you to do down to the most difficult. And I will touch on each. All right, guys. Option number one is sort of weird, right? It's the one that you know you have. It's the one that is right in front of your face. And that's why I say it's the easiest option. That is, of course, to just go ahead and vote for Hillary Clinton. It's easy because that's what your man, Bernie, is telling you you should be doing. It's easy because you're staying within your party. It's like someone saying, right this way, sir. And you don't say, where are we going? Why over there? I was over here before. You just say, okay, and then you walk where you're supposed to go. That's what makes it easy. The part that makes it not so easy is you're sacrificing your principles. But what's worse is you're letting the Democratic Party know that their young, vocal portion of their party isn't committed enough or principled enough to really stand by what they believe Next election cycle, all the mainstream Democratic candidate has to do, let's say it's Joe Biden or whomever, all they have to do is just make sure that they pull out every possible stop to defeat the incumbent, you know, more fringe, more outside of the system, Washington outsider type of candidate like a Bernie Sanders next time so that they know as soon as we get to the to the convention, because in the Democratic Party, remember, you don't really need to get the most votes from delegates. You just need to have the superdelegates, which, which, as you know, Hillary or the mainstream candidate is going to have anyway. So a vote for Hillary is a vote, unfortunately, for the Democratic Party staying the way it is, status quo. She's not going to come in 
with this unfair advantage and then say, well, everyone after me shouldn't have an unfair advantage again. She's going to leave that superdelegate aspect of the party together. So ultimately, keep in mind, Sanders had a lot of gripes about how the current system was being run, not just the Democratic Party, but the actual political apparatus writ large. In a lot of ways, my personal belief is Hillary is just the same president that her husband was, same president that Barack or that George W. Bush was, and the same president that Obama was. Now wait, you're going to say, okay, I'm losing all interest in what you have to say now, RJ, because these are four different types of can um, presidents. Yeah, on the outside, they would look that way in terms of how they treat foreign intervention, in terms of how they treat the economy, in terms of how they treat privacy and um, civil liberties. They're very much the same. They're big government. They're foreign interventionists. They're fiscally irresponsible. And they're beyond the rule of law themselves. Option number two. So check it out. You're going to say to me, how could there be two options harder than this option? Bear with me, because there are. See, some things that are hard aren't always the worst thing. If you're addicted to a, a dangerous drug that's killing you slowly, or if you're in a toxic relationship, the hardest thing may be to stop or change, but it might be the best thing. So option number two is just a little bit harder than option one, but it may not be your best choice. So option two is to vote for Donald Trump. You might be saying, why would I vote for Donald Trump? I can understand that, trust me. There's a lot of things I don't like about Trump. I'm not endorsing Trump. I'm not saying you should vote for Trump. In fact, I have two more options I think are better for you than vo voting for Trump. I would say that there is a case to be made that voting for Trump is actually a better choice for Sanders supporters than voting for Hillary. Check it out. First of all, he isn't controlled by big banks. He isn't a pawn of international global organizations like the United Nations, like NATO, like um, central banks all around the world, the International Mon Monetary Fund. Hillary Clinton is definitely that. I'm not going to go into other tangents and different things, but Trump and Clinton have a lot of differences, and he is more of an outsider like Bernie is, right? So one way to carry your message into Washington with regards to a, a general election vote would be to vote for Trump. Because you could say with your vote, I want an outsider. I don't want another dynasty. I don't want another leader of the country who is playing into the hands of the agenda that's been playing out year in and year out and year in and year out. Trump, in a lot of ways, isn't even a classical Republican or conservative. He's more of what you would call a populist. Um, kind of like a Reagan, kind of like a JFK, kind of like a Lincoln or a Washington. I don't think that any president really truly has their hands clean. Some are better than others. I'm sure that's fair to say. So in no way, shape, or form do I think Trump is perfect or 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 god's gift to american politics i'm just pointing out some of the reasons why you might consider a trump vote over a clinton vote i still have two better options they're harder harder for you to do as a bernie sanders supporter probably you might get more flack from your from your um friends but i think they might be better uses of your time or your vote so check it out option number three is to vote for Gary Johnson. Who's Gary Johnson? Gary Johnson is the Libertarian Party candidate for president. Now, I am someone who shares a lot of libertarian political views on the world. However, I don't identify as a libertarian per se. I don't use that label to describe myself unless, of course, I'm trying to discuss something with somebody in such a way where using that title will help them understand quickly what it is I'm actually trying to say. So I might say, I take a libertarian stance on X or Y or Z. So any which way, Gary Johnson is a libertarian. What does that mean? Libertarians believe in individual rights. 
They believe in our right to our persons, our property. They are, hence the term libertarian, they believe in liberty. So what is liberty? Liberty is the notion that we are as free as we can be to do the things we wish to do as long as we aren't harming other people. So libertarians have differing views um, than Bernie Sanders in a couple areas, such as government programs, government size, taxation. Um, but we have the same overall objectives, believe it or not, in a lot of ways. Libertarians believe that the policies that they put in place will help create the most good for the most people, create the most moral society, and will give true ladder of mobility upward for the lower class in society. You might hear some, some folks say that, well, libertarians want to give all the power to corporations by not taxing them. My understanding, my reading of it is not so. That is not what I see. Um, so again, I will have links in the uh, comment se section below, but let me say a couple more things about a vote for Johnson and how that might make sense for you as a Bernie Sanders supporter looking for a new political alignment. So the other interesting thing is Gary Johnson probably won't win the general election. I hate to be defeatist. I hate to be negative, And I don't really think I'm being negative. I think I'm being realistic. He probably won't win, which is why a vote for Johnson is actually kind of still a vote for Hillary. So you can kind of get your Democratic candidate in, in the office without officially putting your name next to her name and giving her an extra vote. In a lot of ways, Johnson has conservative values fiscally, but not socially. So like Bernie Sanders, or even more so than Bernie Sanders, Gary Johnson's the candidate that might decriminalize marijuana, very likely to decriminalize marijuana or legalize it nationwide. He's in many ways a candidate that wants to help the economy, bring jobs back, and wrestle a lot of the corruption out of the system. By showing support for a third party candidate, you're letting the media, the rest of America, um, and the political apparatus at large, you're letting them know, hey, we don't like this two-party system. We like the idea of an outsider. We like the idea of more choices in our politics. So you had that with Bernie Sanders. You can kind of still have that with Gary Johnson. So overall, that's almost your best bet, really, if you're, de if you're determined to vote for somebody. You might say, I'm throwing away my vote. But if you're giving your vote to the very thing you were just battling a few days ago or weeks ago, the thing that you ultimately didn't want Hillary and, and Sanders was a real liberal, he was a real um, progressive candidate that you thought was really going to make the right kind of changes in the system. Going right back to the, to the status quo, to the, to the Wall Street backed candidate Hillary Clinton, isn't exactly staying in line with what you were fighting for. So Gary Johnson, in a lot of respects, might seem like a thrown away vote, but really has a lot more value for you as an individual, I would say, than that Clinton vote would. All right, y'all, it's getting late. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to get a tiny bit darker behind me. My dinner's inside cooking, and I'm ready to get to the fourth option or recommendation that I have for Bernie Sanders supporters who are now feeling alienated or neglected or abandoned now that your candidate has now gone and done the unthinkable and endorsed Hillary Clinton. Unthinkable, yes. Surprising, not so much. So, what is option number four? You already thought about just voting for Clinton. I brought up that you could actually vote for Trump, and as crazy as that sounds, you're still voting for an outsider. Option three, Gary Johnson, a real outsider. Now he's a libertarian. I'm not so sure if you want to really sign on for libertarianism, right? But there are some aspects, you know, socially liberal, fiscally conservative, but kind of still an outsider and kind of a guy that might do some of the things you want done. What's option number four? Who else is there? It's not a vote at all. Option number four is that you don't vote. Now, some of you are saying, that's ridiculous. I'm going to vote. It is my 
constitutional, God-given right. I am an adult. I am going to cast a vote. Well, check it out. Everything you do is a vote. Now, I'm not out there. I'm not on drugs. If you go to the store and you buy a pair of Nikes, you're voting for Nike. Their share prices are going to go up. Their company's making more money. They're going to expand. They're going to come out with new shoes. If you go out and you buy a skateboard and you skateboard all over the place, you're supporting the the activity of skateboarding. Whatever you do, whether you have an iPhone, whether you wear a certain clothing brand, whether you get a mohawk, you're making a statement, I support mohawks. Whatever it is, is a vote of some sort. So by not voting, you're, you're not only taking a stand by not settling for a candidate that you don't really agree with or identify with, but you can actually go ahead and use your non-vote as a major talking point. And let people know, not voting is a vote. If the poll numbers come out or the election turnout numbers come out and, and they're seeing that year after year after year, there's lower and lower turnout for elections because there's no one exciting. There's no one different. There's no one that really presents a new option to the people. Because really, in America, I would question whether we really have a democratic republic or whether it's more or less um, a monarchy or a dictatorship that just has different people cycling in and out. It's like if... It's hard to explain what it's like, but it's like if a company fired their CEO and then hired another person who worked as the CEO's right-hand man and ran the company exactly the same way. That's the best analogy I can come up with. It's disingenuous and it's somewhat laughable. If people are voting and there's choices, but yet the outcomes of the how the country's run is almost the same or is identically the same every single time, the wars continue. Oh, did Obama say he's going he's gonna to end the wars? Um, torture, uh, Guantanamo Bay, police violence, um, the growing police state, the surveillance state, lack of privacy, things that have been happening since before the Bush era and starting in the Bush era and getting worse, like Patriot Act. These sort of things are a symptom of the political apparatus being run by that select privileged few. So you could vote for Johnson because he's totally an outsider. You could vote for Trump because he's sort of an outsider. He doesn't take money from, you know, Goldman Sachs and, and Wall Street. He did. He's a self-made man to some extent. I mean, I agree with everything he did or says. I might agree with hardly any of it, any of it, but he is an outsider. But Clinton, going back up to that first option, you're just voting for another Bush, another Obama, another um, Clinton. It's the same thing almost your entire life. If you're if you're my age or younger, these same types of candidates have been in in power. So you're not just not voting to not vote. You're you're vote not voting as a stand. You're taking a stand against the options you're being given. You're saying, well, you know what? If Sandra is not in it, and I can't identify with anyone who is in it, I'm not going to vote. And not only not going to vote, I'm going to make a stink about the choices I have from now until November or even past November. So instead of just saying I'm for Clinton and then start hating on Trump, that would be the easiest one. Like I said, the easiest one to do is to go for Clinton because then you can still be mad at Trump and you could still hate on Trump. The next easiest one is to pick Trump because you could be mad at Hillary and you could be like, well, she, and you, you don't have to change your rhetoric because you were already anti Hillary a week ago when you were behind Trump or behind Bernie. So those two options are easy. The Johnson one takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of bravery, a little bit of open-mindedness, but I, I really truly think you should not vote. And while you're not voting, check out some of the uh, Google searches that I recommend in the, in the um, description below. Check out what volunteerism is, not volunteering, but volunteerism. It's in the description below classical liberalism so you know what it is to be a liberal or at least you have a sense what is a classical liberal what did liberalism mean when it got started that's interesting that's something you could be looking into consider what america was founded upon why you have the opportunities you have today it's not because of the policies that you want to have because you don't have them now so the policies that we have had got us to where we're at today some for better some for worse but consider freedom liberty, individual rights. Maybe none of the candidates really support that, to be honest, including Johnson, when you really look into him. But 
You might even look in the mirror and say, as much as we were for Bernie, he wasn't perfect either. There were some things about Bernie that left maybe you wanting. Um, maybe you didn't agree with the whole socialism thing and giving away all this free stuff because you know that there is no free lunch. And if you give away free education or free health care or free anything, well, the people that make those things, that provide those services, the teachers, the professors, the janitors, they all want to get paid. So it's not truly free. The country's either going into greater and greater debt, borrowing money from China, giving them more power, or printing money into oblivion with the Federal Reserve, giving banks more power, making them even bigger and harder to fail, and basically leveraging the future of your children and making them have to pay higher and higher taxes so that you can give things away today. Full disclosure, I am picking the fourth option myself. I was not a Bernie supporter, but I was not a supporter of anybody who was being offered this time around. And um, that doesn't surprise me. So I take option four. I will not be voting. I hope that you consider that option and join me in my efforts to vote for I'm still waiting for a real option. And until we get a real option, I don't want any of these half-hearted options that we have. Also included in the comments below or in the description below, I will have some links to studies about socialist societies like um, Sweden, which Bernie has at times held up as a model of what he thinks his policies could uh, create. And there's some really good articles out there that show, which I have linked below, that show how, in a lot of respects, Sweden and other um, social socialist adopting policy adopting countries are actually only marginally successful because of how much of a free market they do have, and how tough they are about giving their socialist benefits away to those who immigrate there. Um, I don't like math. I'm not a big fan of doing math and equations and hard, you know, calculus and stuff like that. But the sad truth is, is that numbers are a reality. If you're building a house, you need to know how big your pieces are before you start cutting wood and, and hammering things together or else your house isn't going to stand up and it's not going to keep the elements out. It's not going to, it's not going to be a good investment. The same is true when you're building anything. When you're building a computer program, you make sure that it's not going to let hackers in. When you're building a society, you have to make sure that those who would wish to do harm to that society, those who would, or even just the actual expenses, how, like a company, how, we can't just hire everybody everybody we like and give them a $100,000 a year salary. They have to be adding value to the company. They have to be making the company more valuable, making it so that the company is able to offer a better value to their customers so they can have more sales. So, we have to think about that kind of stuff as a country. If the person we're picking is just promising us things that we think we want and those things are going to cost money somehow, some way, well, they're not really free. You're just putting on the credit card and eventually that's going to get paid. So who's paying it and how long is it going to take to pay that bill off? So the good news is, guys, you have options four that I can think of. If you can think of other options, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you liked what I had to say, let me know with a like, subscribe, share it. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to do a response video, go ahead and link it in the comments below. I will check it out and respond in the comments on your video and we can keep this conversation going. Thanks for watching.